Hello and welcome back to another video of mine. I'm your host Heavy Elite and today I actually want to talk about 10 animes almost no one ever talks about. Keep in mind I'm just giving out my opinions and what I actually saw over the past years and uh, let's get going. I just want to have you to remember I'm not only a husband hotel fan. In general I love stories. To be more precise I love fictional stories. Fantasy, flies of life, Isekai, you name it. What I don't like is kind of live action. I'm a huge fan of the animated format and of course I watch a lot of anime. The animes on this list will have several themes for them going, from comedy to friendship to even based on action anime. However, I hope you enjoy this video and hopefully we see us at the end of it. Also, if you haven't done so, why not subscribe, comment, share and like the video since that's the only thing that you need to do and uh, to see my videos more often and tell the algorithm what kind of a nice host I am. Keep in mind those are not in any particular order they just happen to be in the order as i remember them and i just gave them a spotlight also i will have spoilers in here just for you to know and remember that i just want to get the ball rolling so let's get started on number 10 we have the legendary hero is dead Scott Toker is a farmer's boy whose village was attacked by the demons. He lives there with his childhood friend Yuna, who was once saved by the legendary hero Shion. He loves to farm his radishes since they remind him on thighs. Yes, this anime is a fantasy story about a farmer's boy who dreams of a thighs paradise. One day, one day, as he harvests his radishes field, his childhood friend Yuna scolds him again. He should be more like her dream man. Shion, the legendary hero. However, Toka loves to set up simple traps. And somehow, somewhat, Shion actually fell into one of them and instantly died. The anime is actually one of the funniest anime you can possibly think of. Think about this in a way of Moshoku Tensei combined with Jintama, with a very entertaining main cast, a bit of ecchi, but also a lot of comedy. 9. Trapped in a dating sim where the world of Otome games is tough for mobs. This story actually follows Leo Fo Barfart, who died due to himself playing a video game that his young sister couldn't beat. He wanted to eat something and when he did go out to grab a bite, he basically fell down the stairs and died. And it turns out when he came back to life, he actually was reborn, or most likely transported mentally into the young boy Leon for Bartford and lives now in that sad Otome game. While he complains about the shitty story and the incredibly unbalanced, useless male hero characters of the game, he purchased a built-in cheat code, namely Luxion. The story progresses with him having a toxic relationship with the world of the Otome game and he hates all the women for their trash taste inside the university. However, before the story actually starts, Leon goes to a specific location to reenact his cheat code Luxian and with that becomes infinitely more powerful and wins basically by default. While he doesn't possess any magic, he then becomes incredibly rich and, and boasts with his assholery demeanor. And his antics are actually quite entertaining and funny. This anime is more settled and not for everyone's taste, but it does actually have funny interactions between Leon and his entourage of preset opponents, namely the prince and his band of utterly useless cast of heroes. Number 8 is banished from the hero's party so I decided to live a quiet life in the countryside. This anime is about a member of the former hero's party Gideon, who lives now in a small town where he wants to make his dream come true. He got kicked out by his former party sages Ares for not being a true ally. While he does rename himself after the princess, namely Red, with of course of a little bit of a bridged version of it, namely Red, he is for a time being an adventurer to earn money to open up his own apothecary. Later, the princess actually shows up in the village and she does recognize Red for being who he is. However, the world building in this anime is more like a Dungeons and Dragons kinds of setting with less adventure but more life than life. I highly recommend this anime since it does actually have a well-established relationship between Gideon and Red and it's super cute. This anime actually has a second season and is so far one of two animes that have additional seasons to its prior existing. Number 7. I'm quitting heroing. 
The story goes that Leon, the main character of this story, went to the demon's castle alone and defeated all the four generals as also the demon army and the demon queen Echidna. Now banished from the human cities and kingdoms, Leon finds another occupation. He goes to the demon castle where, where demon queen Echidna didn't leave the human world and tries to re-establish her demon army. So, as Leon heard from the townsfolk that she is hiring for the army, Leon shows up and tells her that he can help her to achieve the destruction of humankind. This anime does actually have a deeper plot that one doesn't really expect and the demon army is kind of in shambles, so the four generals who are kind of either ill-suited for their position or mostly occupied with all the work they can possibly get to. While it sounds funny on the outside, the plot has actually a well done twist. I can only recommend it for you to look into. I hope this one gets a season 2. While it does have a two part OVA, we still need more of this story. Also, its opening is a freaking banger. Number 6. The Duke of Death and his maid. Victor is the oldest son of the dukedom and resides alone with his butler Rob and his maid Alice in the huge mansion. When he was young, he was cursed with the curse of death touch, which makes him depressed and he cannot feel any love or touch of anyone. He was cursed by a witch and now he wants to get rid of that sad curse so he can be together with his loved one Alice as also his family. Throughout the series, we see his voluptuous maid Alice sexually harass him or make sexual advances towards Victor. Which sounds edgy, but it's kept in a more 1880 style, kind of a joke. It's a little bit more subtle and least edgy as you might actually expect. While Alice tries to show more skin, there is not that much edgy scenes in there and it's only for comic relief. While it does have slice of life elements and uses 3D 2D graphics for the story is actually well established, it does bring a very well added colorful cast into the story over the time, like his jealous brother Walter or his sister Viola. Due to that very colorful cast, the story becomes incredibly entertaining and heartwarming. This anime does have actually right now two seasons fully aired and currently is on the third one. The Grimoire of Zero. The story follow, this story follows the Beast Fallen Mercenary. Yes, that is his actual name. We do not get an actual real name, we just called him the entire season Mercenary. Which hunts witches. For Beast Fallen are generally despised by humankind, they are only accepted for their strength against the witches. Mercenary on a day in the forest finds a hooded young woman, Zero. Together they try to find the, her Grimoire which grants readers the power to use sorcery. The story also talks about a very beloved witch, Serena, who did have an offspring, a daughter. While she was burned on the stakes, she never had ill intentions and only tried to help. There is also a little boy named Alba, who then follows Zero and the mercenary around. The anime does have a good world building and it's actually quite entertaining for what this anime is based on, namely a light novel. It's a really good anime and does have an interesting story. It does also have kind of a second season, but that follows a complete different cast of characters. And the name is actually the Dawn of the Witch. Number 4. Level 1 Demon Lord and One Room Hero Max, the main character, the hero, defeated the Demon Lord with his party of friends. The story actually starts 10 years later after the Demon Lord's fall and when the Demon Lord is basically bored of waiting around for his resurrection and he re-enters the world again as, well, a smaller version of himself to continue the battle against the hero Max and his party but most likely Max. However, as he returns and finds the hero in a more abridged state, rather than being celebrated, the world forgot about him and actually doesn't care about his heroism. While the hero basically lives from his riches that he earned as an adventurer in a very small apartment with just one room and withers away. This anime starts very entertaining and it's an actual very funny start, however, it's sold off to be just more than just a simple comedy. It does have actually some kind of dramatic turns of events and these are kind of heart-wrenching once you know them. Still, this anime is based on the manga with the same name and is actually really good. Number 3. The Weakest Tamer began a journey to pick up trash. The story follows the young 5-year-old girl Ivy who was reborn into this new world. However, instead of being overly powerful, she actually is incredibly weak due to her not having any stars. 
So she gets hunted down by her family and her village, for they think she is a bad omen to the village. Trying to survive, she lives a trying to survive, she lives for a time being with the oracle that visited the village from time to time, and she sets out to pick up trash that adventurers and the like leave behind to make money. She comes across a little transparent slime, the weakest monster in this world setting, which she, as the weakest tamer, is only capable of taming, and she actually calls it. Sora. This is kind of an isekai but focuses mostly on Ivy as a character and her taming skills with her trying to be positive. While she has trust issues due to the treatment of her home village, the viewer has actually good reasons to root for this little girl. I can only recommend this anime for it's incredibly unique. Number 2. Sandland. The story follows Raoul, an old soldier who fought in the last war in Sandland. Now, his king, who controls the only water source in Sandland, sells water for an unimaginable high price. But Raoul sees a water bird, which are told to live where the water sources are. So Raoul actually believes there must be a legendary water well somewhere to share this with the people and his kin. So he does go to the demon city where the little demon Beelzebub lives. Together with Beel and Thieve, they try to find that water source and actually come across a very colorful cast of people. The story is from Akira Toriyama and was a manga in 2001. This story is actually quite intriguing and fun to watch unfold. It does have some Toriyama general character design and just recently aired in 2024. Strangely enough, it doesn't have anyone talk about it so there you have it and finally last but not least the last anime that i really want to talk about is basically number one helk yes this anime just recently aired in 2023 the story follows the character vermilio one of the four elite demons in the setting and the demon lord was freshly defeated by the hero so the demon realm actually establishes the idea of a tournament to find the new next demon lord which is overseen by vermilio however inside the tournament there is a human like humanoid participating which is as strong and powerful as the hero Helk, the titular second part of the main character cast Helk is undefeatable and causes vermilio distress and outbursts of her fiery nature so Han, the servant of azodra comes up with the idea to sabotage Helg in the tournament with glassy slippery cards which all the participants are supposed to build a 10 store tall card house this anime is incredibly funny and has all the checkboxes for a shonen anime checked however it does get into a very deep plot later inside the manga as also the anime after the tournament arc ended it still keeps its humorous side and is meant to be a parody of typical fantasy manga anime out there, but it still keeps its stupidly entertaining and funny dramatic bullshit inside the show. This one is one of the animes I highly heartwarmingly recommend, because it is actually ridiculously fun. And there you have it. 10 enemies almost nobody either talked about or didn't get as many recommendations as they should have in all honesty. I highly recommend to check them out. Tell me in the comment section if you actually watched them, heard about them or if you still want to check them out. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this little list and I wish you a good day, good night, good evening.